All right. Welcome to the Marriage Boss Podcast, episode 18. I'm totally pumped up, as usual, but tonight I am super excited because I've got a very special guest. Have you ever wondered why happiness is so elusive? Does anyone ever really attain lasting happiness? The answer is a most definite yes and no. Although many struggle to find even an ounce of happiness, others seem to find it and lose it just as fast. So what's the secret? My special guest is life coach and spiritual advisor, Merrily Sweeney, as she shares her insights on the truth to finding yourself happy by applying two principles to every relationship. Whether you are struggling with a romantic relationship, friendship, parent, child, neighbor, or boss, the answers are always the same. Learn how to love yourself and love your neighbor. These two simple but profound principles are all you need to accomplish whatever it is you wish for your life. This is the missing key to manifesting all your desires. Merrilee is a certified life coach, health coach, minister, single mom, and mother of four. Whew. Her upcoming book, Find Yourself Happy with Merrilee, is a journey through life, touching on the commonality of each decade. Then, as if giving the reader a peek into a beautiful future, she combines the law of attraction with faith, supported by science, to help the reader find their way back to the garden where everything is provided. Now there's no reason why you can't find yourself happy too. So let's give a big marriage boss welcome to Merrilee Sweeney. Merrilee, welcome to the Marriage Boss Podcast. Rick, thank you. I'm really excited to be here. I'm listening to that going, really? You're going to tell me all that? <laughs> yeah, and you know, a lot of people have the same reaction to their bios and um, yours is, is it's terrific. you got a lot of stuff going on. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Does it but feel like that when you hear it? Does it feel just like that? Just listening to you say that. <laughs> That's you know what it made me happy reading it. So I'm excited to have you. Thanks for thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you. So when we first spoke, we jumped right in and 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 talked about these two things that you seem to have, um, you know, chosen as your message. One is self love, and the other one is learning how to love others. So when I heard this powerful yet simple message in this approach. I mean, everybody wants to try to simplify. So how did you come up with just, you know, hitting these two points? <laughs> well, I can't take credit for it. It's, it came from our rule book. All right. Right? Yeah. So in the Bible, that's what it says, to love your one and only God. And that came first. Mm -hmm. That's not number two. That's number one. All right. And then it's love your, your neighbor as yourself, right? So people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they take that for granted, and it's like, I'm a good person, and they kind of move on, and they navigate through life. But what they're doing is they're navigating through man's world. A man's world isn't really loving. It's not the garden, per se, mm -hmm. because way back when, when there was the garden, and we didn't fear anything, everything was provided, and we only loved each other, right? Yeah. But as soon as we took a bite of the apple per se, or from, from knowledge, now all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, I, I, I know better, I'm so smart, I, and now I'm afraid because I have all of these things. And so generation after generation, even stories through the Bible, it's all the same. It's always faith or fear, faith or fear. You've come on that, that road of where are you choosing to live? And most people live in fear every single day, fear of, of not having. And, and it makes them um, reactive to people around them. And so we really don't, we don't teach ourselves or teach our children how to love a little faith. You are right. And, you know, as I think about my own relationships, and certainly when I was a kid growing up, um, you know, my father was working all the time. So my mom brought us to church, but there was still some disconnect between all of the teachings and our practical action and the ability to use this. I never heard the word self-love um, probably till I was 40 years old. Yep. 
So I, I don't I don't even I, I didn't I never heard of anything like that. So and then when I when I first started to hear it, it was kind of weird, and almost you know like it just didn't really make sense. Um, a lot of people think that it's conceited if you love yourself. Well, you love yourself now. You're an egomaniac. So I think that we, we're not taught this first of all. But then when we are taught, it's so alien to us. It's very difficult to practice. Um, people call you selfish. Okay. You know, if you if you start to think about yourself at all, you can hear that kind of stuff. So how how do we how do we practice self love? Let's say there's somebody out there who's a beginner. They're just coming to this this podcast and they they're thinking about getting into this because they've heard a lot about it. But how does one start? You gotta know who you are, what you're made of. See. I would say that most of us, the people that I that I um, consult, everybody is struggling with the idea of who they are. They have no idea. I mean, from a, from a child, you're taught, you know, to be nice, to get get along with others, and stop thinking about yourself, and share, and give, and give, and give, and give, and give. But that's number two on the list. Hmm. So we're not taught how to love ourselves. It's like, how are you going to get something for yourself so that you can give? So we're always running on empty, trying to fill somebody else's cup. Yeah, you know, I think that um, when I, when you're saying this stuff, I'm thinking a lot about the women who are taking care of families and taking care of homes and in some cases taking care of husbands and a lot of the traditional relationships, because this is a relationship show, we're talking about um, when the women get into these marriages and they they have more than one role. If they have kids, now they're a mom, they're a wife, they're also a mother and, 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 a, and a daughter and, uh, and maybe a sister or a friend. So I think as you're, as you're saying this, I hear a lot of the women in our audience are probably going to say, yeah, that's me. I'm the one who's depleted because I've been doing for everyone for so long. Now, of course, men have their own issues with this stuff, but I think, you know, there's a lot of women out there who are going to be able to relate to what you're saying, because mm. they're all running on empty. True. And that's why everything begins with that man and woman. They need to know their roles first. If ideally, if that man learned how to love himself first, and she learned how to love herself first, and they came together, they would have a storybook relationship because they would understand where I am and where you come in hmm. and what my role is in relation to you. So then, if there's somebody out there who's already doing number two, seems like people pleasing and that type of stuff is all about, you know, doing the number two first. That's taking right. care of other people, making sure other people are happy or approve of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, from our parents, you know, parental approval, that kind of thing, all the way to our peers and classmates and, and all the way up to our relationships. So how does someone find out who they are? Let's say, you know, I asked how do they start on this journey to self-love. You said find out who you are or know who you are. So, so what are the people doing out there who haven't figured that out or don't know how to figure out who they are? Well, first of all, you got to figure out that you're not who you think you are. It's, okay. That's your ego. You know, all your certificates on the wall and how you look and how you present yourself and where you shop and how big your house is and all that stuff is your ego. Okay. Okay, so that's, you know, some people are more blessed than others with, you know, their physical appearance. But at the end of the day, if we strip all of this down, what do we have left? That's our spirit. Without our spirit, we're going to be dead. That's what keeps us alive. So, so perhaps if, if I am concerned about my career and going to the gym and, you know, who I'm going to see tonight or how many Facebook likes I have, I may be missing out on the spiritual side of myself, which is going to keep me from finding out who I truly am. Is that correct? That's a really good point um, because obviously we all do that. Yeah. But it, that's called busy work. 
whatever it is that we're doing that's keeping us running, how packed our schedule is, you know, it's like, oh gosh, I have the kids, I have this, I have that, and you're running, 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 running. That doesn't hold as much weight as what you're doing on your downtime. And the problem is, a lot of people don't leave downtime for themselves at all. They have to be jam-packed in order to somehow fill their value cup. You know, because I'm always giving, I'm always contributing, I'm always volunteering at this, such as that at the school and my kids and, you know, my husband has his functions and I have this. And so you're, they're looking for, look at me, look at me, I give, 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 yeah. this is who I am. But at the end of the day, they're exhausted, depleted, and they've got nothing left for themselves. Well, this is a good follow-up to uh, one of my last podcasts was about listitis and all about how we're, you know, just kind of working that to-do list and and just trying to fill the gaps from you know Monday to Tuesday or 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock right um, almost like we have to go back to back mm -hmm. so assuming somebody then can get disconnected from all the busy work long enough um, how do we tap into this real spirit and find out who we are everybody has a different you know, religious belief, and so, is there is there a way for, is there a blanket statement, to get people to reconnect to, to absolutely their... even, that's where science comes into all this because okay. even if you have a different religious belief, if you were just to put away that stance for just a moment, and be in the stillness, and quiet your mind. We call that meditation. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, and I can't wait to do that. That's one of my favorite things. I would rather be meditating than anything else because if I, oh, I'm getting off on a tangent. <laughs> well, that's we're gonna we'll come back to that because that's going to be yes. an important action step to okay. self love. Yes, and so anyway, in that stillness is where you're going to connect. In that stillness is where your answers are going to come from. So if you have this list itis that you're talking about, and I'm so busy, 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 it's like you're you're literally operating in man's world. You're constantly running, trying to to knock off your list. That's never ending. You're exhausted, and so, you're not happy. So if we get back to this point about meditating a lot of a lot of our audience is going to say well I don't meditate I've tried I'm not good at it it's you know whenever I do it I either fall asleep or I start thinking about the stuff I got to do when I'm done meditating <laughs> or uh -huh. the stuff I could be doing right. while I'm meditating which is a waste of my time because I'm not right. I'm not good at it so how does somebody we're, you know we're it's almost like we're going back we're actually backing into this whole thing which is yes. exciting this is like the action steps in reverse which is good because I think a lot of us start with the place we want to be and then we don't know how to get there. Uh -huh. so, so how does one begin this process? How does one become still? You know, I'm one who's going all the time. So I, I, I you know, when you say downtime and stillness to me, I just get it because I'm in this world with you. Yes, yes. But, but I don't do it naturally. So how does someone who's alien to stillness and downtime begin to make that nat more natural and more accessible? Okay, well, one of the things I like to do is I like to change people's uh, perspectives on whatever topic I'm trying to make my point on because if I'm trying to make a point on, obviously, on meditation, they're just like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. No amount of words are going to get it. You have to get away from that. So let's look at something else for a moment, a little bit more fun. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about sex for a second. All right. Now, two people come together, They're, everybody can have sex, anybody can have sex. Two people can come together and pretty much know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Because or figure it out. We, exactly. Yeah. And, and we'll fumble through it and we can procreate and whatever. But it's completely different from learning how to make love. So if, if all you know sexually is what you learned from, you know, a porn movie, I can guarantee you, you're not making love. Okay. And you, you will have no idea the beautiful connection that you're missing. 
because when you're staring, you know, you're looking into their eyes and you're sharing your breath and your bodies are together, you're literally joining two energies together to create another energy. Whether or not that happens, you're still creating. Okay. Okay. So that's a spiritual world. So to look at the spiritual world as meditation, again, you're connecting with the ether. You're connecting spiritually. But it takes practice, just like making love. You can't go from just hopping in bed knowing what to do from a porn to, to making love with somebody. It takes practice. You have to understand the energies and go on. So you just have to keep trying. So it's quite possible that a lot of our audience, including me, are picturing themselves as a new lover as somebody who's just kind of like either in the back of a car at yeah. a drive-in or you know so so if we are not accomplished at whatever activity we want to master we've got to practice it let's think about that for a minute too because that, that's a that's a really good point like if that's where you learned you know to to be romantic was in the back seat yeah. okay and let's say, you know, your life goes on and you're having relations with this person and then, you know, it's like, well, I'm in love with them. I think I'm going to marry them. And you get married and you have children. But that part of your life has never really improved mm -hmm. since the backseat. Yeah. Okay, so then life starts to take over. Now you're busy. You have to provide. You're too tired. You, don't, you know, it's like, yeah, it'd be nice to have sex. But you know what? We both put on a lot of weight. I'm not feeling really sexy right now. And so that intimate time gets less and less and less. And you miss out on the beauty of making love. I can see how we could apply this to a lot of different areas in life. Yeah. Our job. Mm -hmm. you know, anyth Absolutely. Anything we don't connect on or get aligned with or practice mm -hmm. certainly could become one of these areas that we either don't pay attention to anymore don't try anymore yes and uh, this this could actually become a pattern throughout your life where you are just kind of doing the minimum or going through the motions it's called complacency yeah without and ever really connecting that's right and you know what? And my next episode is called Commitment and Complacency, where I talk about that and I ask people, what is the difference between the two? What happens? What happened to your commitment and why did it become complacent? Oh, by the way, you know, I'm realizing now we didn't talk about Merrily TV on this bio. No, no, we didn't. We'll have to bring that up before we're done because we want to have people go and see your, okay. your show. And yeah. uh, I'm just going to say out loud here right now in the middle of this uh, show. Her TV show, which is online, is amazing. So what you're going to see here is just, you know, a tiny little sampling. So audience, you got to check out Merrily TV. It's incredible. The Merrily Show. The Merrily Show on YouTube. The Merrily Show on YouTube. And we'll, we'll make yeah. sure we put the address in the show notes. Awesome. And, uh, all right, so let's get back to, all right, so, so, so I think we've backed into a little bit the self-love and kind of finding out who you are and what you are and going to the spirit and maybe trying some stillness, trying some meditation, practicing, thinking about that love making and that connection. So this is almost like, um, you know, a love making of sorts, you know, with your higher power and connecting to source. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that, so, so it all boils down to, um, we could cultivate this self love, which you suggest is the number one thing we should do, which is to connect to that source. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that 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 feels a lot better to me, a lot easier, a lot more manageable in my head than some of the other steps. So I'm going to leave it at that. So let's move on now to the second part, which is to okay. love your neighbor, which a lot of people who have now become evolved and gone back and mastered step one, which is self-love, they may be having a harder time now with the love your neighbor part. So they might either be missing that or let's let's get into that. Let's talk a little bit I'll about tell you what, how we can be good at that. It's, I would I would venture to say it's almost impossible to not get number two down if you have number one down. Okay. Number one is most important because what happens is when you are like a well greased engine in number one you are overflowing with love. You have nothing but love to give. And it's unconditional. That means I really don't care who you are. I really don't care that you know, you're know you a rat. 
and that these are your principles and I can't respect you and da 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 <laughs> you know <laughs> um, yeah I, you're a rat a rat All right. I actually use the word um, fuddy dud <laughs> you are a fuddy dud and a rat <laughs> I'm not, I like Marley nobody says fuddy dud that is a very nice way to put it well, the thing is, but it's easy, you know, because when we don't love ourselves, we're in constant judgment mode. Oh, boy. I'm, so that's a good indicator then of, of someone is kind of a little bit too low on the self-love if they're judging and criticizing absolutely. all the time? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So see now, this, uh, <laughs> this is an <laughs> aha moment. Yes. Because I'm always kind of my wheels are turning when I hear judgmental critical statements and right. and I see and I witness judgmental behavior okay so this is a self-love issue absolutely okay well then this makes this show even more important because um, this could even be if you have a problem with criticism and judgment and this kind of you need to listen to Mary Lee in this case okay. all right so so you're saying that if we get the self-love thing down, yep. we'll have the love your neighbor thing down. You know what? It, it's all in that number one. When you have self-love, it spills over, and that's where the law of attraction comes in. That's where science supports the law of attraction. That's why, you know, we can talk about religion. Religion is different than spirituality. I agree. And, and faith. I agree. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so with those two commandments, if you get number one down, that's all it says. It says these are the two most important. So if you stick to that, you're going to see amazing things happen in your life. And, and the issue is people don't slow down enough to understand what it really means to love yourself. It's like you've got to have integrity. You have to have personal standards and commitments. Um, you know, like if I say that I'm a giving person, but I'm going to judge that person on the corner and say, you know, I can tell that you're not really that hurting. You can easily get a job. Maybe I don't know what you plan for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm judging. We do it. We do it. But, I'm, but I consider myself a giver. I'm a giver. But isn't that conflicting? It is. And I see this a lot. And I have a lot of conversations about this because there are a lot of things that each of us has in our little list mm -hmm. that are the things that we either judge or mm -hmm. criticize or you know there's there's a lot of issues about around this I want to touch on another thing before we close um, I talk to a lot of people every day about relationship issues and one of the things that that I hear the most is um, that they're trying to you know have a life where self-love is important but the other person is really getting in the way of that. So, how, how do you how do you address that when someone else feels like they can't get into their self love journey because the person they're with is really holding them back from that? Well, if we're talking about a marriage, any type of relationship at all. Yeah, love relationship. Okay, and um, it's it's a growth period. That's where people grow apart. Okay. You know, are growing together, and you really need to make a decision who's most important. If you're in a marriage or a love relationship where you're trying to grow and you're trying to find out what that self love is really all about, but you're not getting support from the other person, and so they're claiming, I'm being held down, I can't do it because you know, he or she gets mad. Who are you putting first? The other person. Or the, or the relationship. It's A lot of people see the marriage as like this one thing. Mm -hmm. So they're either holding that up or they're holding the partner up or protecting them or, 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 or giving in to them. Right. Okay. Right. So, so I do very often, after listening a lot to these type of um, complaints, their complaints, mm -hmm. I do talk about self-love. Um, a lot of times... It really has to be that person's on their time frame when they're going to find that and make that a priority. It's not something we can prescribe a lot of the time. No, um, not something. Well, I mean, it's the remedy. 
Yeah, it's, we, right? we, it's up to them if they want to take it or not. Yeah, I, I can. I find that that is some hard advice to take sometimes. If you're far away from self love, it's it it feels like a long journey for for a lot of for a lot right. of us. Right, and that's why dialogue is so important because as people speak, you know, from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So as they're speaking, they're whoa, reading. Whoa, whoa, hey, that's a tweetable. <laughs> Let's not <laughs> jump past that one more time. Give us the give us that one again. From the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Oh, wow! Yeah, that's so, that's, that's powerful. Right, and so as they're speaking to me, I'm hearing everything that they're saying in between what they think they're conveying to me. Okay. And so it's very um, easy for me to to pick that scenario and just say, okay, so. More of like a, more of like a mirror, and not, you know. It's like I let them land on it when I ask them questions. Like it's hard for us to talk so vague. Like if you had something like I had a a woman who, I could tell you specifically, but these generalities are a little bit more. Okay, tough. so so here's one. So, okay. woman is married about eighteen years. She's got four kids. She is. She's been trying to communicate with her husband for most of the 18 years and he's he, he doesn't want to talk about it so he just says I don't want to talk about it to almost everything she brings up mm -hmm. and so she is finding it very hard now to get back to her self-love because she's she's been crushed mm -hmm. so, okay so then I would ask her what why are you staying yeah it's a good question so, so you think at that point it's really, I mean, and this has been going on a long time, not just, it's not a, a new development, it's been going on for, you know, over 18. 10 of the 18 years. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it, it's it's who she was at the time 18 years ago. Okay. You know, for whatever reason she made that commitment to him. So, so, so this is, these a lot of this self-love stuff really, you really got to get down to some brass tacks if you're going to approach this stuff seriously. It, it all comes down to fear and faith. Okay. It, it really does because in this scenario you just gave me, you know, she's she's that's her crutch. He won't talk to me. He won't talk to me. He won't talk. That's not the issue. Why do you stay? Yeah. You know, and if you're staying out of fear because you don't know what's going to happen, your well-being, how you're going to survive, da, da da da, you're lacking in faith. You're not jumping. The people who succeed are the ones who jump. So on that note, do you think that it's safe to take these two commandments, self-love and loving your neighbor, and do you think that we can actually connect the concepts of fear and faith to Absolutely. if you have fear, it's going to be harder to achieve it. If you have faith, it's going to be easier. Um... Okay, let me, let me taking that, for a taking that leap takes you have to overcome the fear and you have to have faith. You absolutely do, but people need to be shown how fear is getting in the way of what they want to achieve. Okay. They can't it's really hard for them to recognize fear. So once well, yeah, when you're when you're in it, I mean that's the biggest exactly. that's the challenge that, that that fear poses mm -hmm. is that when we're in it we can't recognize it and do anything right. about it. And it's nothing to feel bad about because from the day we're born, we are raised in fear. Mm -hmm. Don't touch that. Don't do that. Yeah. No, you're not going to, you know, and it's like, okay, okay, everything is you're going to try to navigate instead of supporting that child, letting them learn how to navigate up and down the stairs instead of telling them no. Yeah. I was told no and uh, somehow broke the chains of that and, and certainly I can see um, how fear affects us and how being taught mm -hmm. affects us. So um, this has been so enlightening. I can't wait. I mean, I, I almost feel like there's going to be a part two I to this so. episode. And so uh, we're going to do that again. So so tell me a little bit about uh, the Merrily Show. And is that what it's called? The Merrily Show? The Merrily Show. Mm -hmm. And it's on YouTube. Yes. All right. So, so what... what what do you? What topics do you explore in that show? Okay, the, concept, the concept is, the way I came up with the idea is that 
we operate on circumstance wherever we're at in our life and we make assumptions that we understand life's concepts you know like, like for example one of my episodes is called um, see no evil okay see no evil hear no evil speak no evil what does it mean so I bring people to the table to show the audience there's probably a lot of you out there who are thinking exactly what my audience is saying so if this is you there's a lesson to be learned here let me change your perspective if you can start living with these new perspectives your life is going to change we don't slow down long enough to see it differently Okay. we just make assumptions that we already know so where can they find uh, where can our audience find your show on YouTube on YouTube the Marilee show okay so we'll put a link in the notes to that yes. and do you have a website that you want to send anybody to um I do it's the Marilee show okay. and um, Basically, I mean, everything's in progress. I'm not a techie. I, you know, it's been a struggle for me because it doesn't really convey exactly what I wanted to. Okay. And, um, but, you but know. I, I want to, I want to jump in and say how we met. Um, we were on, you know, some sites doing some posting together and just connecting. And then you got on to the Marriage Buzz site and the Marriage Boss site and your commentary was so intellectual and love oriented and it was just warm in addition to professional so that's how we connected so I would invite the audience to connect with you um, you are a gift um, you know we've become good friends now as a result and and uh, you know we're doing some work together so I, I think it. that uh, you know I appreciate you coming on the show today so thank you oh gosh it's my honor I was really excited to be here today because you know, it's it's really a shame that that more of us don't get out and have these types of conversations. That's why podcasts are are just you know exploding because we're just dying for good conversation. Yeah, and this is it, and there's plenty more to come. So, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, Rick. Bye, Marley. Bye. Goodbye.